Hello and welcome as today's day comes in that of the 24th of October 2019. My name is Derek. Like always, all bets, trades, and of the like within each his own risk and their own reward. In today's video, first off, silver. I've mentioned I'm not going to be putting any short, short charts or analysis on it until it gets out of correctionary phase. It's up 1.5%, but it's still in correctionary phase. Basically, in the $17 range, it's like $17.80. Not going to take a look at it, but getting above 18, that's big, and that's when I'll be covering it. Alrighty then. Bitcoin, it's a continuation of just pausing yesterday's move at 7,500. That's when I looked at it yesterday, and I made a small bet decision. Okay, maybe I should, uh, well, based on that price, looking to go lower, and well, it's been staying around the 74s. It's just not really doing too much. We take a look at this on the short term time frame. You can see that not doing much there. All right, so that's the Bitcoin analysis right there. There's not much more to go over there. I'm going to continue on after that with Theta, following through, which will be the next chart after this, after this introduction. Then Tron, and then uh, more on the New England Patriots and the selection and wagering that in that self. Just ideas, I think, that uh, how I look at it. Uh, just maybe I can help uh, within that. And uh, that will be that. So let's take a look at the... Uh, Theta chart, as it too is doing the opposite of what Bitcoin is. Bitcoin had a big red down day, and then today is just having a very small stand within it. And here yesterday, Theta having a very big green candle up day, and then having this little small, but now a red candle uh, move lower, at least from this high. It's, uh, was it 1265? Well, yeah. Uh, that was a 15 minute chart. I'm just looking at this at. But on that time frame, that's what we're seeing as just short term from the highs of uh, well eight o'clock last night I was thinking daily chart but anyway so short term after having many three hit levels of support around 1220 ish area and resisting established at 1239 from 730 in the morning to nine o'clock it has just of course recently broken out are we going to resume something big well maybe and it looks like it let's take a look at this on we'll say the uh, three hour and we're seeing all of this nice little good volatile movements. Nothing showing that this trend is over. It has successfully thus far been correcting within that of the 18 of highs. As it had after being well extended from there. Having a quick sudden move to the lows. And then getting back to this area supporting in here where it resisted. Thus we've established this level of new resistance. Uh, and we're seeing in here excitation of the 18, which means, okay, good chance not only getting to there, but also having a leg above it of whatever portion. And on the daily chart, which is exactly why I got a little bit of confusion on the 15, because I knew exactly the, uh, what to expect. And well, that was that green candle up and that little bit of pausing stuff. Half and came back yet to where we came from. This thing could resist now. It could resist at 15, 2,000, 4,000. These alts are set when they're ready to go. I just haven't said the words, when they're ready to go, well, they're ready to go, because not many lately have been. We'll see what ha happens here. Let's look next at Tron. And in viewing it in this, you may not see too much, but uh, well, from the highs at the start of the year, what have we seen occur? We see neutralization in here, nothing major to try to get it above a little bit here. Ultimately, after this little area, which was from this support and then breaking this huge leg lower, where did it go to? It came back to this key previous uh, support level. And then a very small break above the 18 average of highs, but noticeable nonetheless. That less weakness at the 18 lows, coming back down to where you came from, resisting it and concise and decently in time move down to this level. So where do we stand since then? Well, it's obviously been the bottom there. So the market was able to have a move up in here. Okay, so an attempt to break out. And then having what's a successful correction within the 18, we can see for a long time now it's been supporting what was this level of resistance here. Meanwhile, again, establishing a level of resistance amongst there. As far as how this goes within the 18 after having... Uh, three days in here supporting it, move to the highs, and then immediate move back to the lows where it supported for three consecutive days, completing that yesterday. Today's session getting out above this noticeably, and we're still noticeably below this high. 
So therefore it looks like we're going to get to this, whether it's resist breaks it or not. Usually it does, doesn't always. I'd be looking for this little area short term level resistance here to be support on any short term levels if it's going to come back. And then breaking about this, it's always wild card. How big can it be? Well, it was wild card breaking it above here that it could be a big move. It wasn't, but it was a move of a leg higher. And maybe that's what we get, just a leg higher. 323 or 230, probably be bigger, but 233. But yeah, 322, 822, these are levels that could easily happen in like, well, 822 could happen in less than a day or two days or three days. And definitely 322 can happen in less than four or five hours when these things, of course, are ready to go. When we look at this on the three hour term time frame, we can, uh, I'm going to first put up a, a horizontal right here, which in this area, it kind of got up to here, I suppose, at this move. So the lower end of this resistance was first hit three or so periods ago. I don't even need to put a line in now because the green line is already in for this level of resistance. So it's at that, okay, key level, let's see what we do here. We got another one though, we got the uh, one above that, so I guess that's the middle ish or so level. So I guess the key levels after that next would be about 209, 210, 211 area, ballpark. And if we don't settle for much resistance here, then it's probably going to take be a fast, fast move. That would take us, of course, to that 209 time frame. And, and then getting above that, like we would see on the daily, this, the moves after that are, like I stated, on the wild card situation. And let's now move on to some footballs. I have released that... Uh, the spread, minus 13 for the pages. I've seen it now down as low as minus 12, or I think it's barely over, e about even odds, a bit better for minus 13. But a lot of other places still have it minus 13 flat. The chart that I'm showing is how many games above 500 that New England Patriots are since the start of the 2001 season. And the first two games were losses, and those were games in which... Uh, well, Drew Bledsoe finished the game. That was the the, the second game was the uh, well second last time Drew Bledsoe would finish a game for the Patriots, not counting any type. No, no, it would be the second last time in the playoff game, the AFC Championship in his first year. Tom Brady went down due to injury, was back for the Super Bowl, of course, and uh, uh, but Bledsoe, of course, did well. But anyway. It's approximately 195, 128, 9. Now, why do I use approximately? There could be two ways of errors. One, it's like, well, what lines are the right ones? I'm using covers.com historical results. How accurate they are, I don't know. So I got to put the accurate in there. But even myself, I'm going on there pushing, okay, was it a tie, a win, or a loss? Putting in a notepad, then letting my spreadsheet do this work for me. I, I mean, I might have been off a little bit here and there, but I don't know what side it would have been. But either way, 60%. I was watching a podcast this, uh, or, or listening to it, I should say, of uh, Teddy Covers in the uh, Vegas community. It was very popular in Vegas in sports betting. And he was mentioning how the Patriots or Brady was over 60% against the spread in his lifetime. I'm thinking, how do I not know that? How do I not know that? And I know lately they've just been dominating, kicking ass. And, but yeah, that's what it is. 195 wins, 128 losses. And when you look at the Patriots run, it started off, they won the Super Bowl the first year. The second year, they actually didn't do quite as good as we can see. And then they won two consecutive Super Bowls after that. And for a little while in here, from like game number 100 to game number like uh, 230, over 130 sample size of games, uh, it took them that to get above 500 and really get these cons that major consecutive streak of m consecutive losses of major proportions. In fact, in the... Uh, uh, the year that they went, uh, they're probably the only team in football history to go to the Super Bowl and fail to cover their last six games against the spread. That's what they did that year. They didn't cover the last six. And that would have been, I think, within this streak in here. And that would have been that 16-0 uh, Patriots season that finished 18-1. and The last three games of the regular season, they won and covered, as well as their first two playoff games that year. And then the Super Bowl, they lost both spread and... Of course, the uh, game. And this is regular season and playoffs. I didn't do preseason. I mean, there might be an edge there. I don't know. And I was looking at I barely looked at it. But I was thinking a couple of times. I mean, Patriots have been doing well against the spread the last few years in the preseason. I wonder if there would be any point to it there. But it's not the preseason now as it is anyway. Also, what this means is if all you did was bet blind on the New England Patriots to cover the spread every game, no matter when you started, you're up. 
no matter when you started, yes. Because if, obviously if you started here, you'd be up, uh, it's actually 54 units because you'd have to pay rake. You have to lose a little bit more when you win. You'd be up 54. So you'd have to give back 10 units due to rake. We can do this with a calculator. For if we go in here and we take uh, 195. Okay, let's just do it this way. Let's take the 128, but we're going to lose 1.1 units on those losses. We're going to win 195 units for the time we win. And the 128 times we lose, we're going to lose about 141, which means that's uh, 54.2. You'd be up 54.2 units since the first uh, day of that season doing such. But again, no matter when you started, you'd be up, because if you started it last week, you'd be 1-0. And if you started the week before that, you'd be 2-0. and And before that, the Patriots have covered the last three games against the spread. And uh, then they didn't cover two games before that. So if you start at that point, you'd be 3-2. and two. So you'd be up 0 0.8. And then this big winning streak, no matter when you started, whichever day, no matter which number you pick, you're up no matter what. I mean, it's just been that large of an uptrend. And then I just quickly looked at my stats for every time they win three consecutive games in a row against the spread. It's just sick. They are, they are do do dominant. So why would I want to even consider making a play on the Cleveland Browns. I've already went through the analysis of the reason why. I don't want to go over that again. Look at my previous videos, but I am very, very strong on the probabilities that I think that we should be seeing, and we have to adjust to the message of the market. And I don't mean it just by this chart, but I kind of do. I mean, ever since it broke this resistance right around row number 260, uh, 60 games ago or so, the last four seasons. And they've been, what have they been doing the last few years? Oh, they make Super Bowls and they usually win it. Yeah, sometimes they get defeated. Yeah, you know, how about that Jared Goff? Well, not Jared Goff, he actually beat him. How about that Nick Foles? I guess he's the only one recently that's beat him. Eli Manning a little while ago, but that's... That's how it goes for them. They just keep on covering the spread. And when I look at the pure number of the game, okay, they got like 13. I'm thinking, how do we... I mean, realistically, let's just put it this way. Okay, well, one thing I like to think about is if there was a, uh, an uh, a matchup of interpretation today, this first this team at that team, what would the spread be? So an example would be how about a game like, say, the Green Bay Packers at the New England Patriots. Green Bay are one of the top teams in the league right now. Or uh, even better yet, let's uh, assume that the injury to Patrick Mahomes never happened. And we have Kansas City at New England, or New England at Kansas City. Well, if it's at New England at Kansas City, I'd almost still have to say the Patriots are at least a three-point favorite. And if it's on the other side, now we're talking seven, eight, if not nine. Just for Kansas City, I'd, literally, I'd have to say the Patriots are seven points favorite at home minimum against every team, if not even eight nowadays. That's how dominant the situation is with them. So then we have to bring, okay, each team that goes on deserves a higher spread. So if we're talking uh, Kansas City, our top team in the league, Patriots should be a seven, seven and a half point home favorite, which is a very strong consensus to say, given the gap between the first and second best team. But I think that gap is there. And then we take another team below that. We'll say a team like uh, Baltimore. Uh, if you think Philadelphia is good, but they're not that great right now either. A team like Seattle. Seattle's another good. Maybe they're nine point favorites against Seattle. And maybe against a team like Baltimore, they're that as well. And then we get into the average teams. The teams like Detroit. If not, even they're not that average, but I suppose they might be. Teams like the uh, Buffalo Bills, maybe. Teams like the Philadelphia Eagles and Dallas Cowboys. And this is where they should be, maybe 12-point favorites. And then we got bad teams like the Cleveland Browns. And then the horrible teams. And even these numbers I'm saying might even potentially should be a lot higher. Now, we're not in the college spectrum of 30-point spreads or 40-point spreads or anything yet. I'm not going to say yet. I'm just saying, I'm going to say yet because it's possible. They play pretty much the same game as far as scores and points and time on the clock. But when you have a situation of the dominance that they're doing, I'm just going to make the wager. But realize as a, a better, like I say in all my videos, you take your own risk-reward. I do that every single day, and I've done so much of these I've had so much action in bets in whichever form that having your bankroll go up and down in whatever sense is what I'm used to. And whatever strategies for 
uh, situations that come about. And I really told myself, I'm not going to be doing any of this type of spread bet unless I see anything really strong. And well, I'm seeing this to myself as a strong play. Now, whether I'll continue betting the Patriots every week on a losing cause, that's pretty much going to be a scrap bet as far as risk-reward management, as far as uh, bankroll size is concerned. Realizing that I always am one for limiting risks, risk and maximizing reward. That's always my number one strategy. It has been for two plus decades now. I just get better and better at it as, as every year goes on with experience. I do find this phenomenal. Like, how did, but, yeah, I, but it makes sense. Because early on, you're like, oh, right off the bat, as if you're going to be like, yeah, we got this guy coming in from Brady. The Patriots held four quarterbacks for no reason. Check out this uh, tape we've got of him. Uh, I'm not gonna uh, his combine tape, and it's actually kind of funny because it's if you look at Tom Brady's combine tape, you're like, wow, this guy became one of the best players, if not the best player ever to play the game. Thank you for tuning in. Have yourself a great day. Bye bye.